So hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Inspiration for today. It's Thursday. And so as I said at the top of the week, Monday, uh, we're going to get to meet some older friends or longtime friends and some newer friends. And so Alan and Debbie are in that second category, newer, because what you were telling, well, first of all, Alan and Debbie, how do you pronounce your last name? Suboda. Suboda, because it's, it's spelled differently. Japanese, like tsunami. Oh. Okay. Okay, great. Well, anyway, so you've recently, fairly recently, moved to Laguna Woods from a place I had never heard of, even though I've lived here my whole life. From Trona, which is out in the Mojave Desert near Death Valley. And you were telling me that, that that's a word that is part of an element or something. Uh, trona is the name of a chemical salt that naturally forms in that area. And that uh, probably close to 90% of the products we use every day have some piece for, that came from Trona. So that, it's mined then. Correct. Yes. There's so a dry salt lake. It's so interesting. So well, we anyway, we, as always, we want to start with our verse for the day. So I'm going to let uh, Debbie go first. And by the way, I said you came here recently. When did you actually move to Laguna Woods? I'll let you answer that one. Well, we kind of had been in and out for about three years. We bought oh. our condo from his father three years ago. But we officially started living here full time about a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. Great. We became members of uh, Settleback Church just last spring. I saw that. I looked at, actually looked it up, and uh, that, that's so cool. I so appreciate it. You're such a blessing to us. What's your verse for that's, or what, that's been meaningful to you through this kind of shutdown time? Um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Shall I say it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And this is my favorite part. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I love it. We need the peace of God right now. And uh, not to let our hearts be anxious. That's really a, a verse. <laughs> I was saying, that's a verse for today. But Alan has one also, and just because it was shorter, I was saying that could be our official one. But now that I hear Debbie saying that one, I love that one so much. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Anyway, Alan, what do you got for us? Mine's from Proverbs 2, uh, two 3, and in the uh, New Living Translation, it says, trust your work to the Lord, and your plans will work out well. Trust your work. Interesting. Yeah, thank you. Uh, along those lines, because we want to get to, to know you a little bit more. That's one of the goals for this week. You both, now, Alan, you were saying you, well, tell us about your profession that you recently retired from. Well, I, I was a school principal at the same school for um, 35 years. And then prior to that, I was a teacher, a special education teacher at that school for two years. And then prior to that, I was a special ed teacher in Clovis in the Central Valley. That is so cool. We, we have actually several who, uh, people who were special ed teachers also in the church. And if you don't know them, when we get back together, I want to introduce you. But uh, <laughs> anyway, and Debbie, you, did you work at the same school? Uh, part of the time, I worked at the same school. And then when our children were born, I worked at the Christian school they went to. Uh, everybody at that school volunteered, though. I was credentialed, but nobody got paid. We just all volunteered to make it work. And um, then I went back to the school. So he was my boss. There was a little, he did not <laughs> hire me, but he was my boss. <laughs> You were a teacher then? Yes, yes, I taught. In fact, I've taught every grade from kindergarten through 10th grade. And you liked it? I loved it, especially the little guys, the K-1. 
teaching kids to read is is such a when they get that aha moment like oh, i can read this it is just so joyful it's 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 great well we actually have at least one other kindergarten teacher act that's still teaching in our in our church and who is a good friend of mine and she just loves those little kids is it kim no it's linda miller Oh, I don't know her, but Kim Knotts, I know, teaches little guys. Okay, yeah. Well, then there's at least, there's two then <laughs> <laughs> that I know. Well, that's that's so great. Well, you guys, uh, let's just talk about, I know you've been doing some reading during this time, and well, share with us what you've been reading. You want me to go first? Sure. Uh, well, I said that my favorite book is uh, a book entitled The Tipping Point by Gladwell, and it talks about how little things can make a big difference and how certain things or ideas, products and behaviors spread and they just become uh, something that just becomes part of everyday use and how that becomes. Was it talking about products? Yes, it, it, it's, it's uh, products and ideas. It's, it's like a uh, a lot of people in the business world would, would read this book. But I just liked it because it reminds me that little things, little ideas can become uh, something that's really big and spread as big. I'm fascinated by that. I'm of the mindset that right now things are creeping into our habit pattern, let's say that we're not even realizing might be there because of these major changes we've all made in our lives. Is it that kind of thought? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I think for instance, that this working from home is something that's gonna be much more accepted yeah. now yeah. than six months ago. I think part of it kind of reminds me of my favorite movie, which is the original Back to the Future. And there, you know, little things that you do have an impact and, and the impact it makes on the future events of things. And it's kind of the same way that book is. Yeah. That's so, that, well, it's one that I might <laughs> love to borrow from you. <laughs> Anyway, uh, and Debbie, what do you got for us? Um, well, actually, this is one of my all-time favorite books. It's Redeeming Love by um, Francine Rivers. And uh, I guess she wrote it when she was first, first became a Christian as, a, as an adult. And it's based on the story of Gomer and uh, Hosea. And I, I love it because, well, it's based in the, it's placed in the gold rush, but, um, I love it because the theme of it is how God just faithfully loves us, that um, he can take broken lives and through his faithful love, those lives get put back together. He loves us into that healing and acceptance. I, it's, it's, I recommend it to everybody. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a novel though, it right? Is a novel. It is, it is. It's um, like I said, it's based in the gold rush and um, it's, it's, it's a love story, you know, but it's, I mean, they don't. Well, well the, the, thing I, the thing I know about it, this is a book that Diana's raved about for years, and I know she gave it as a gift to both our daughters. Yeah, it's, one, it's, it's, it's a love story based on God's love for us. And it's wonderful. we can never be too convinced of that. So <laughs> it's awesome. Well, you guys, thanks for coming on today. And uh, actually, we're going to get to know, we're going to dig a little bit deeper and get to know them a little bit better uh, tomorrow. And so uh, tune back in because they have some really interesting uh, things to say. God bless. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Beautiful day. It's wonderful. The day that the Lord